Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel in my tutorials. Are you ready to take your bar charts to next level? In this tutorial, we are diving into the latest release of Power BI where we'll transform your standard mundane looking bar charts from boring to wow. All of this can now be done using the new overlapping feature which is available within the native visual in Power BI. And thanks to Power BI Park who shared the tip on creating the IBCS style variant chart using the error bar. So all credits due to him. So before I get started with this tutorial, I'm going to just quickly explain what is it that we are going to be learning today. So if you look at the standard chart that we have here, all I'm displaying here is the previous sales and the selected year sales here by the category. And you can see that when you look at this visual for the first time, you're not very clearly able to see as to what is happening here, whether um, the previous year sales are high or low, you will have to spend some time to understand what exactly is happening here. But when you look at this variance chart here, with just a glance, you are clearly able to say that eggs, meat and fish category had the highest amount of sales when compared to the previous year, while rest of the categories were lower when compared to the previous year. So in this tutorial, I will be teaching you how to recreate this particular visual so without further ado let's get started with this tutorial let me show you the data model that I have here I have a very simple data model I just have one table here which contains the order information and I have another table here which is the calendar table if you don't know how to create a calendar table there's a separate video on my channel please go and check that out and I've created a relationship here using the date in the calendar table and the order date in the orders table so this is the very simple data model that I have so let's go to the report view and start creating our first visual here so I'm going to go back to this visual here I'm going to copy the year slicer that I have paste that here and let's add the clustered bar chart here and I'm going to add in the category on the x-axis and on the y-axis I'm going to start by creating some measures I have the sales amount over here I'm going to start by creating a measure I'm going to call this measure as selected year sales is equals to a very simple measure where I'm just going to say calculate some of the sales amount. Confirm. So I have my first measure created which is selected your sales. I can now get rid of this column in here so that the measures list to gets converted into a dedicated measures table. And now I'm going to create another measure here. This time I want to create the pre I want to calculate the previous year sales. I'm going to call this as py underscore sales is equals to I'm going to say calculate selected year sales comma I'm going to use the function same period last year and pass in the order date or pass in the calendar date column in here and then I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm I now have the previous year sales calculated as well so let's bring in both of these fields into the y-axis and now you can see that we have categories here by their selected year sales which is 2022 and the previous year sales which is 2021 I can now sort this here by the category and let me sort this ascending so that I have this in the same order and you can see that eggs meat and fish category had the highest sales when compared to the rest of the categories and now let us transform this chart into the IBCS style. So let's see how we can do that. So first of all, let's head over to the format tab here and let's head over to the column section. Let's scroll down and on the series here, instead of selecting all, let us choose the previous year sales. In the previous year sales, let's turn on the border and let's increase the transparency to 100%. And now you have the border. You can change the color of the border to black and you can play around with the width if you would like to. I'm happy with one pixel as the width here. And then let's scroll up and choose all here so that you'll be able to see the layout here. And then there is a option here which says overlap. Let's turn the overlap option on here and increase the space between the categories to about 40%. And now you can see that we've created the overlapping bar chart. It's now time for us to change the color of the selected year sales. So let's scroll up, let's go to the columns here and choose the selected year sales and let's change the color here to black. We now somewhat made some progress and we've created the overlapping chart here. Now let's turn on the data labels. I'm going to go here, turn on the data labels and you can see that we're now displaying the data labels for previous year sales as well as for the selected year sales. 
we need to only display the data labels for the selected year sales and it needs to be displayed right on the top. So let's go over here and choose previous year sales and turn this off so that we don't display the previous year data labels. And now I see a problem here wherein our data labels here are appearing somewhere here in between, but they need to appear right on the top. And now it's time for us to identify the max value or the upper bound value for each and every bar. Now, what do I mean by max value? For example, in the beverages category, the maximum value that we see here is 706,000. And in this case, which is eggs, meat and fish category, my maximum value here is coming in from selected year sales. In the beverages category, the maximum value came in from the previous year sales. But in the eggs, meat and fish category, my maximum value is coming in from the selected year sales so we need to identify which of the measures has the maximum value so let's identify that so I'm gonna create a new measure I'm gonna call this as max underscore value is equals to if sorry if selected your sales is less than previous year sales then I want to return previous year sales else return selected year sales. I'm going to close the bracket. So what is it that I'm doing here? I'm checking if my selected year sales is less than previous year sales. If it is less than previous year sales, return the previous year sales else return selected year sales. I'm going to click on confirm now. This will help us identify what is the max value for each and every bar. So, so let's go to the builder visual tab and let's bring in the max value here as well into the y axis. And now you can see that we've added a third bar in our case. So let us see what we can do. Let's go back to the columns here and let's choose the third value that we've added which is max value and increase the transparency to 100% so that we no more see that particular bar here. And let's also go up here to the legend and turn off the legend so that we don't see that anymore. And now uh, let's go back to the data labels and let's choose the max value data label here and turn this data label on. And let's choose the other ones here and turn them off. And now you can see that we are displaying the data labels on top of every single bar. With this, now let's proceed to the next step of creating the error bars. So to do that, I'm going to create a new measure here. I'm going to call this as sales underscore max is equals to, I'm going to use an if function here. I'm going to say if my selected year sales is greater than previous year sales, then return the max value else do not return anything. I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm. And now it's time for us to start adding the error bars. So let us see how we can do that. Let's select the visual, go to the format section here, go to the error bars, scroll down here, make sure you are selecting the PY sales here because we are calculating the selected year sales max here. So it's always the opposite. If you have selected the previous year sales, you need to add the sales max that we've added here. So let us see. So let's also turn on the toggle here for the error bars. Make sure to do this else your feature is not going to work. In the upper bound section here, I'm going to bring in the sales max into the upper bound section. You can now see that I have added the error bar here, which is appearing in gray color only for the eggs, meat and fish category because the selected year sales value is higher when compared to the previous year sales. Now you may ask why are the error bars not appearing for the rest of the categories? Now the answer is that we'll have to create another measure to do that. I'm going to show that to you in a bit. So for now, let's quickly format this particular bar in here. I'm going to scroll down and change the color of the bar here to green color. And then let's change the market shape to none and increase the width to about 10 here and then also decrease the border size to zero. Now you can see some space between the green bar here and we can see that black background in here. That's because we have to make a small change in the space between the series. So let's go back to the column section here. Let's choose the series all. Let's scroll down here and let's decrease the space between categories to about 30. And now you can see that we have perfectly aligned that and let's scroll down now. And now we've created this bar here and now it's time for us to add the red bar. So let's create a copy of this. I'm going to select the sales max value. I'm going to create a copy of this 
and let's create a new measure. I'm going to change this to PY sales max and instead of greater than I'm just going to change this to less than and then click on commit and once this is created let's scroll down to the error bars again this time I'm going to choose selected year sales series and make sure to turn this on and in the upper bound section here I'm going to bring in the PY sales max here and now I've added the error bars for the rest of the bars as well or rest of the categories as well let's scroll down and let's start formatting this I'm going to change the color here to red increase the width to about 10 and change the marker shape to none and decrease the border size to zero and now we have added the error bars for both the green and as well as for the red wherever we have an increase as well as whenever we have a decrease and now it's time for us to add some more data labels to this particular visual if you take a look at this chart here i have added the selected year sales the percentage increase or decrease and also the previous year sales on the next line so let us see how we can add this let's go back to our demo tab here let's create a new measure here i'm going to create a new measure to calculate the percentage change so i'm going to use the divide function here and say selected year sales minus the previous year sales comma the denominator here is going to be the previous year sales I'm going to close the bracket and confirm I've now created the percentage change measure let's quickly format this as a percentage with one decimal and now let's create another measure I'm going to call this measure as data label data label is equals to I want to display the selected year sales and I also want to display the percentage change that we've just created enter and now let's also add in a separator between them I'm going to add this bar here um, double quote and for send and enter and now let's go back to our data labels tab data labels the series here that we've selected which is the max value where let's go to the value here and instead of max value let's choose the data label that we just created and now you can see that we're now displaying the entire sales value and the percentage we now have to quickly format them so let's quickly do that let's quickly format the selected year sales I'm gonna say format selected year sales comma open quotes I need a dollar sign in here followed by an hash comma I need a separator dot zero one decimal comma and then I need a K and then I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm and now you can see that we've now formatted this and then we also need to format the percentage change so I'm going to quickly format the percentage change here followed by a comma open quotes 0, 0.0 percent close the quotes and confirm and now I have this formatted as well and now we have our data label sorted we are displaying the selected year sales followed by the percentage change so it's now time for us to change the color here based on whether it's an increase or a decrease so let's quickly add a new measure in here I'm going to call this as color formatting color format is equals to I'm gonna say if my percentage change is greater than zero then green else red I want to confirm this and now let's go back to our data labels here and I have this little FX button which is conditional formatting and I'm going to choose the field value this is going to be based on the color format I'm going to click on OK and now you can see that we have green and red and let's also increase the size to about 12 here and let's make them bold and now they are clearly visible and it's also very evident which of them have gone up and which of the category sales have gone down and the last bit that is missing here is the previous year sales so let's see how we can add that so let's go back to our data labels within the data labels there's something called as detail so let's turn this detail on and let's expand this let's scroll down and add data measure list let's go to the previous year sales I'm going to add this now and now you can see that we've added the previous year sales however it is not very evident as to what this value is or and what this value is so let's add a little prefix to our 
previous sales. So let's create a new measure to do that. I'm going to call this as previous sales underscore label underscore label is equals to I'm going to say I'm going to prefix this with PY space and then select PY sales and I, I will also need to format this. Let's quickly format this here followed by a comma open quotes comma and then a K. Let's close the quotes close the bracket and confirm and now we have formatted or we've created a new measure PY sales label. So let's quickly scroll down to the detail tab. Let's change this to PY sales label. And now you can see that we are displaying the previous year sales here correctly formatted in the values. And you can see that in this case, 565K is the selected year sales, whereas the previous year sales is 389K. If you wish, you can change the color to black and also increase the size if you would like to. And now we have created a perfect looking variance chart, which is very evident when you look at the first time to understand what is what exactly is happening with your sales data. So with this, we've created a nice looking IBCS style variance chart within the Power BI using the native visuals. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.